Oh, God. Harem anime. So, I guess it's no secret by now that I am a fan of Japanese art and culture, and that does extend to manga and anime. I was given a request not long ago to talk about one of the more popular ones nowadays, the harem anime. Now, what is a harem anime? I'm sure you've heard of them, I'm sure you have heard the term at least, and you've probably seen one or two without realizing it. Well, before we talk about different examples of them, let's first talk about what it is. What is the harem anime? Well, judging from my current predicament, as you can see on the screen, uh, it works something like this. First, start by having a main character who is usually a guy, but can be a girl. That's what you call the reverse harem anime, but we're sticking with the stereotypical for now. Now, make sure that this male character is young, not super attractive, but good enough looking that he's passable. And, oh yeah, make him bland as bread. Make this guy so vastly uninteresting that you even struggle to color in his pupils. Make this guy so uninvolved, so ununique, so fades into the background dense that you actually have no problem overlooking him. This is key, and we'll explain why in a minute. Now, you can give him a few key traits, but make sure these traits don't make him stand out. He has to be somewhat good at cooking, I imagine, maybe a decent uh, doctor, you know, he can do the medical stuff, you know, maybe he can uh, sew things, maybe he's a decent shopper, you know, that kind of thing. But make sure that he doesn't do anything that makes him stand out too much, right? Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, it's time for the most important part of a harem anime. And the most important part of any harem anime is not the main character. No, no, no. It is the girls he surrounds himself with. Have at least three. Three is a pretty good number, but don't be afraid to stretch it out to five, six. How about ten different girls, right? Okay, now the key about these girls is unlike the main character who is, as I said before, bland as bread, these girls have to be completely unique. Like, don't make one too much like the other. Make sure that each one is unique, beautiful in their own right. Probably each one has different colored hair. They each have a different background. They each have a different personality. Make sure you throw in a shy one, a tsundere, maybe even a yandere if you're feeling risky, a strong independent type. Um, a foreigner just to shake things up. Make sure you get a good collection in there. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, why would you want to do that? Simple. Because the whole goal of harem anime is not to tell a compelling story. It's to titillate the male reader, or female reader in the case of reverse harem. And just to make it quick, reverse harem is everything I just described, only reverse the genders. It is stuff like Oren High School Host Club, where you've got a female main character surrounded by boys who are all unique, diverse, and interesting, whereas she is as bland as bread. But I digress. So, these girls, you want to make sure that you make them diverse and unique and a male character who's bland as bread because you, the male reader, are going to have to insert yourself into the main character and become him. That's why he has to be bland. If you give him too much personality and character, it's harder to become him. It's harder to step into his role and become him. Why would you want to become him? Well, because you want some of them. You want some of those girls. You're going to... The whole goal behind the harem anime, the whole point behind it, is it's a choose your bay game. It is a choose your girlfriend game. Which out of these group of over-sexualized girls do you like the most? Which one do you imagine yourself with? Insert yourself into the main character and make your choice. That's all there is to it. That is the essence of a harem anime. Now, I think the big question to ask here is, is it good? Well, that depends. Some can be decent enough, but um, I can't think of many that are. Good examples of harem anime include High School DXD, Rosario Vampire, Everyday Life with Monster Club, uh, Everyday Life with um, Monster Girls, um, Infinite Stratos, 
uh, To Love Rue, Ranma One Half. These are all very popular ones that I know of. Oh, High School of the Dead. Can't forget that one. I, I would be remiss if I didn't bring up that one because that one haunts my nightmares. Not because of the zombies, but because it's so awful. But anyway, back to the point. So, are they good? Well, from my perspective, no. Most harem anime are not good for the harem itself. And the reason why is pretty basic. I'm a storyteller, not a fetish teller. I don't like stories that are built only on the titillation of the reader. They annoy me because it's shallow. I used to have this saying, if you have to sell anything other than prostitution with sex, then you've created a bad product. Essentially, that's why I don't like commercials where it's something like, I don't know, toilet paper or uh, perfume or something like that, where it just shows overly sexualized women or men advertising it. I'm kind of like, you're trying to sell me something with sex. I'm really not that interested. So really, um, that kind of stuff doesn't appeal to me. Now, can hair man be good? I think it can. Like, for example, take Ranma One Half, which I think is one of the stronger hair animes. Um, your main character is Ranma, who actually breaks the mold a little bit. You know, like I said, you usually want your harem anime protagonist to be bland as bread, but he's really not. Ranma is very hard to step into the role of because he can be passionate. He can be a bit aggressive. He can lose his temper and be very assertive at times. What do you mean, true horror? This is all your fault, old man. What's the idea of dragging me to a place like that anyway, huh? Ranma! <laughs> You sound like a girl! Were you not prepared to lay down your life for the sake of the art? My life, yes! My manhood is another story! But at the same time, he can also have a goal. You know, one thing that a lot of harem anime lack is they lack a character with a goal in mind. They're usually not trying to reach anything, but Ranma definitely has a goal. Ranma, where are you going? I'm going back to China. I have to find a way to change back for good. This is no time for fiancés. And I think that's what makes him so unique to me and what makes Ranma a little bit more fun for me. Following Ranma as a character rather than trying to picture myself as him. Because quite frankly, I don't like many of the girls that he is with. Sorry, Shampoo. Um, more to the point... There are some that can be good on their own merits besides just the characters. And what's sad is, I feel like the harem anime tropes that are put into them ruin them. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, what are those tropes? You know them. Almost every harem anime happens because of a miscommunication between the main character and the group of girls. Like, example, Mo Everyday Life with Monster Club. Uh, no. Why do I keep saying that? I keep saying Monster Club. I'm sorry. I keep saying that. It's Everyday Life with Monster Girls. Uh, Monster Masume, no, whatever. In Monster Masume, each girl that he comes in contact with is always due to a misunderstanding. With Mia, it was because uh, the government that was going to find her a host home put her at the wrong place. With Poppy, it was because she kidnapped him because she thought that he could get her food. With Soraya, she bumped into him thinking that it was a Japanese curse that if you bumped into someone, they would become your soulmate. Um... Each girl that he runs into, it's an accident or it's a miscommunication or something happens where there's a loss in translation somewhere and they end up being together. And that's how it almost always happens. It could be something like in Tolovru where the main character meets Lala because she's on the run from these guys who look like they're trying to kidnap her and Rito tries to protect her only to find out actually she was just running away from these guys because they want to take her back to her father. But she interprets this as a sign of love. Um, you could make it like Infinite Stratos, where one of my favorite characters, Charlotte, um, he finds out that she's a girl and that she lied about her uh, information to get into the school so that she could spy on him, but he doesn't hold any resentment to her, so she automatically likes him because of this. And I'll give Infinite Stratos a lot of credit. It doesn't go down the next trope I'm going to mention very, all too often, but I should say this next trope... Oh, is one of the worst things about harem anime. Harem anime has a bad habit of delving into the etchy side of anime. Etchy or etch or etchai, I think it's etchy, is basically the term for erotica, basically over sexualization. And by that I mean bordering hentai. I mean we see um exposed breasts, we see um 
lots of body. We see lots of skin. We see very erotic moments. And a lot of harem anime dive into this. The One of the biggest offenders of this, I think, is to love Rue and Monster Masume. Whereas with Infinite Stratos, I don't see it as often. I mean, it's there. It's there. And it does it a little too often, I'd say. But, I mean, take this scene. Thank you for covering for me. Well, no problem. <laughs> uh, your breast. I can almost see your breast. Huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, does it really bother you? Well, of course they do! Uh, would you like to see them? <laughs> they what? You are a pervert. Me? Who's a what? what? And compare it to this scene. No, not exactly. I was just taken aback because she was trying to force me. It's not like I'm against marriage, you know? Really? Well, that's not quite all of it. I've never even had a girlfriend before. Plus, I've never, you know, been with a girl. I see. So it's not that you don't want to. Yeah. I knew you couldn't possibly be having doubts about marrying me, darling. You're so sweet. <laughs> and you are so... Face your heresy! <laughs> yeah, see what I mean? Um, it's stuff like that that can turn me off to it. Because Monster Masume, I think, is a very good anime... In the sense of where it talks about monsters. When it talks about monsters and their culture and the background of these girls, it can be very interesting. It can be very unique and very fun to follow. But then when they try to put in Echi, it's almost fe it almost feels forced. It doesn't feel natural. It doesn't feel good. It feels almost pandering. And that's what harem anime really is when you get down to it. And that's the reason why I never really got into it that much. Harem anime is pandering. It is basically saying, hey, you like girls, right? Wouldn't you love to have your pick of them? Well, fear not, dear male viewer. Insert yourself into this male character that we're creating as a blank slate for you. Become him and pick your favorite waifu. That's how Aram, that's how Aram, Aram anime works. And sometimes it works great accidentally like Ranma where, quite frankly, I barely consider it Aram anime just because even though there are a bunch of girls trying to get Ranma... It really isn't the primary focus. The primary focus is dealing with Ranma focused on different battles that he engages in, different situations they find themselves in, which are honestly funny. Most harem anime are slice-of-life anime, which means that they don't follow a saga or arc. They mostly just um, deal with the daily life of these characters, which you need to do because you need to see these girls competing for the male character's affections and attention. Again, for the titillation of the reader. So, but Ranma doesn't follow that. Ranma, even though it's more slice of life, does not deal with these girls always competing for Ranma. It's more of Ranma trying to find normalcy in his life and something always coming along to ruin it. Because he's got his own share of issues. If you've ever watched the anime, you know this. <laughs> um, but stuff like Monster Masume or To Love Ru are very slice of life. There's no overlying arc. There's no major goal that the characters are trying to accomplish. It's just, hey... Here's a scenario, let's make it happen. And sometimes that can be fun. I can deal with slice of life stories. Like one of my favorite anime ever is My Roommate is a Cat, which is a very slice of life uh, anime. But this, when it does the monsters, it's fine. When it does the character development, it's fine. When it dives into the emotions, backgrounds, and story of the, of the harem anime, it can be okay. But that's few and far between. More often than not, it's going to focus on sex, or lack thereof, romantic friction between characters, competition between girls trying to win a guy, and a guy who is so uninteresting you forget his name. Please, someone, just for fun, someone tell me the name of the main character from Monster Masume. I know what it is, so you're not going to surprise me, but tell me, every, most people just know it as Darling. No, most people don't know his real name. Anywho, not a lot to really say here. I know that y'all probably expected a lot more anger or rage from me. But the thing about harem anime is I don't have enough hate for it to be angry at it. That's not a compliment. At least with things that I can get angry at, at least I put enough passion into it to be angry. But with harem anime, it's just not bad enough to hate but not good enough to like. And it kind of sits in that limbo area somewhere because I only like certain aspects of it. I only like certain things that can come out of it. 
But hey, that's just my opinion. For those of you who like hair anime out, anime out there, great, good for you. I'm glad you like it. I'm glad you found a niche. As for me, um, I'm going to stick with good stories. I'm going to stick with stories that actually go beyond that. And a good example I would give is something like uh, Food Wars. When I first saw Food Wars, I thought that it was a harem anime because you had a few girls that were interested in the main character. But really, that's more in the background. They treat that as a background issue, which it needs to be. I'm not interested in seeing that in the foreground. I don't want to see that in the foreground. Um, now, does that mean that I don't like romantic tension? No, romantic tension's fine. I don't think I'm great at writing romance, and sometimes watching it or reading it myself helps me out. And I'd be lying if I said that I didn't see some good romantic tension in harem anime at times. But from a storytelling perspective, it's quite often weak. Not worth the viewing time. So, with that said, ladies, if you would be so kind, <laughs> thank you. That does it for me today, guys. I will catch you in the next video. Take care.